Hello ladies and gentlemen, your captain speaking from flight deck. My name is Captain Surinder Singh. Welcome aboard the plane talking. Sit back, relax and enjoy your journey. So in the previous two classes, we saw availability of the various distances and requirement. Now in this classroom, we will see how this availability and requirements are matched to obtain our takeoff speeds, V speeds. So let's say in this class. Okay, in this video, again, one of the very, 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 very important topic for you, for all your life. Again, least industry understood most confused topic okay and it is the easiest one as a pilot if you try to understand okay the various v speeds performance calculation okay so we take off we saw in the last video that our takeoff starts at uh, wheels roll basically where you release the brake till aircraft reaches height of 35 feet so by the way in all these distances, you have to factor the turning radius and line up distance which you will be eating up while coming on to the runway. Are you understanding? Okay, just to tell you, give you an idea, my runway length may be some thousand feet. Correct, when you calculate mathematically. But aircraft is not lining up here. Is aircraft lining up here? Okay, so that's why when you will study your performance for different aircraft. That time you will see manufacturer gives you correct lineup technique. Means, let's say if you are here, you will take some turning radius that has to be factored. You cannot take all the distance for lining up here. Here, what will happen? Then the runway length available now is reduced. Okay, so. Any aircraft which you fly, manufacturer always give you the distance which you have to factor from where your takeoff will start. Okay, again, for every aircraft it is different how many degree you are turning through because my runway length may be this, but what about which you already taken up? Are you understanding? So these small, small things are calculated. Okay, now let's say you have lined up on the runway, you have done all your calculations. Remember all these performance calculations cater for one engine failure for a multi engine aircraft. For single engine you have no option. If engine fails at any stage depends. If you are on the runway what you will do? You will try to make use of whatever runway is available. If not available then pray with me. Ham se jo paap hue, tab tak niche ho it is the time name will take off ke time. Pe. Okay, now so simple logic it is all for multi engine aircraft where you have one engine failure at a most crucial place. Even when you will learn or when you join some airline or you do your type rating, the exercise which you will start with something is called V1 cut means at the most crucial place you have engine failure where you have to take a decision correct at that decision speed you have engine failure and that exercise is called actually called V1 cuts means at exact where you have V1 now what you will do kind of thing decision making okay so here now let's say you release brake and start rolling what is the first speed anyone pilots sitting here in the house what is the first speed which comes there are many speeds, okay, but we will see what are relevant for us at this stage, okay. If you are planning to take off, you need to know from the runway, Tora, Toda, Azra, correct. Similarly, this is the calculation before every takeoff. Hmm. PM? Okay, okay. the first speed is minimum controllable speed on ground. Now what is minimum controllable? Remember all these calculations are for multi-engine aircraft, correct? And 
let's take it as a twin engine aircraft one engine fails okay what will happen aircraft will lose a direction correct let's say you are rolling left engine fails right is running which side aircraft will your aircraft will go to the left if the right engine fails aircraft will uh, drift to the right okay all these calculations are done with the premise of critical engine failure now this is very interesting term critical engine failure now critical engine is the engine whose loss will cause maximum direction loss or other failure of that engine will cause maximum direction loss it is not that that you have your right engine fails your direction loss will be same or the left engine fail no okay again this is more relevant when we study technical subjects in that we study what is critical engine so in simple term critical engine is the engine whose failure will cause maximum direction loss during take off why there are lot of forces it is more in turbo prop engine propeller engine other you see those propeller engines in on those propeller engine this critical engine really you will be able to feel it when you fly okay so all this caters for the worst condition that at v1 basically we will see what is the v1 you have critical engine failure that will cause that will cause maximum direction loss okay so vmcg when you say vmcg is minimum controllable vmc okay v speed mc is minimum controllable and g means on ground now let's say before that we have lot of speed so we will not discuss we have something called engine failure see when your engine failure took place then you have a pilot reaction time okay which is fixed if i am making an aeroplane i have to certify everything as per that so let's say you have something called vef means at this speed your engine is failed now when the engine fails and by the time as a pilot you see and take the action and analyze okay my right engine is failed or left engine is failed there is a reaction time 2 seconds which had need to be factored and now you will take the whatever action you need to take so on ground you are rolling okay your engine fail how you will control the direction what do you have rudder vertical surface you have moves left and right with the rudder pedal obviously it need some dynamic pressure means some air flow i'm sitting on the ground in the cockpit and rudder karta rahta hu anything will happen for this rudder to be effective you need certain air flow from the front when you give the right rudder rudder goes to the right air flow will come here you got to your to the right okay you give left rudder rudder will go to the left and let air flow is coming from the front and it will give you direction control are you understanding so you need a minimum speed at which your rudder will be effective to control the direction there is nothing else available to you to control the direction so this is the minimum speed at which your rudders will be effective to control the direction in case of one critical engine failure clear okay next speed let's see okay vs stands for stalling speed now you have realized okay that your engine is will you are controlling the direction okay now if you have to continue the stalling speed is the minimum speed a curve should have less than that speed in technical we study lift generators is not sufficient to balance the weight and aircraft descents so even when you learn the stall uh, it's like simple if the whole weight of the aircraft is to be lifted up you need a weight is pulling it down you need lift correct if the aircraft has to fly lift has to balance weight cl half rho v square s okay so less than this speed okay the lift will not be sufficient and that's what we say stalling the condition of flight where lift is not sufficient to balance the weight and aircraft descends when you fly center of gravity cg pata hai na 
it is a point through which weight of the object is considered to act. So, in all the aircraft, CG is head, lift is not sufficient to balance the weight, aircraft will descend. Since nose is head, it always drops in a normal conventional aeroplane. So, when you will learn your flying, that is how it happens. The aircraft stalls, it will descend, and obviously, nose will drop. So, if you want to take off, correct, you want to continue with the takeoff, you should be at least at the speed where aircraft can lift up. You cannot stall, uh, you cannot, sorry, before that you cannot take off. Okay. Then you have a speed called anyone? No one. Okay. Then we have a speed called VMC A. Earlier it was called, now all the books they refer it as VMC. If this G is not written, it means it is talking about minimum controllable speed in air. Okay, VMC A. Nowadays, it is standard used as A is not used, either VMC G or VMC. C means controllable in air. Now, in air, if you have to maintain the direction, one, you have rudder. So, normally what happens? Let us say I am flying. Okay, my right engine field take at the time of takeoff. You will give the left opposite rudder, you will control the direction, correct, and let us say you continue with the takeoff. Now, you have a cart will still may go to the right. So, you can use the bank angle to control the direction. Okay. So, now you have not only rudder, you can give the bank angle also to maintain the direction. So, that is what it is when VMC minimal controllable speed in air or simply VMC. Okay, means what you have question in exam also the bank angle permissible for the calculation of VMC. So, actually, let us say if I am making a multi engine aircraft, I have to demonstrate everything. Okay, my rudder effectiveness at this speed aircraft is above stalling speed and now you can maintain the direction by giving any idea how much is the maximum bank angle? 5 degree. Okay, that is the bank angle you can use to control the direction. This is also examination question. We will read it together whatever is given in your notes. Try to understand. Okay. Finally, we reach at V1 which is the decision speed and this is the actual speed you call out during takeoff also V1. Okay, and you calculate how much is V1 based on your declared distances for Tora, Toda, Asda. Now, this V1 is very important. Okay, now this is called decision speed because it has got a meaning. At this speed, aircraft is capable of continuing with the takeoff with the remaining engine. Okay, and you can stop the aircraft also at this speed. Now, let us See, if you have to stop the aircraft, that time you need ASDA, which you studied. So, at this speed, the ASDA is sufficient if you need to stop the aircraft. So, ASDA may be, it can consist of your TORA and stop way. Let us say this is your stop way. So, here you have sufficient ASDA to stop okay, with whatever deceleration devices you have. Deceleration ke liye kya hota hai? Break hota hai. You have thrust reversal also, but we calculate for the worst case. Okay, means we do not have thrust reversal. Again, we study in technical. Basically, whatever you have available for the stopping the aeroplane. Okay. So, you have sufficient and in case this is for stopping, correct? You have sufficient this available and in case you want to continue with the takeoff, you need to have toe down, takeoff distance available. Means you can clear the obst obstacle whichever is in the takeoff path by at least 35 feet within the clear way, not outside this. Okay. So, clear way is both side of the runway. And within this clear way, aircraft should be able to reach uh, 35 feet, correct. So, in this case, 
I have sufficient clear way also if I want to continue with the takeoff and I can reach the height of 35 feet. That is screen height for a dry runway. Make sense? So, at this speed, let us say you have sufficient, you want to stop, good. You want to continue with the takeoff, you can go ahead with that. This is the decision speed. Before this, now what is the significance of this speed? Why it is so important? Is pay attention, very important thing for you. Normally, people know the definition, it is the speed, you have sufficient runway length to stop all, but what is the significance of it as a pilot? The significance is, let us say, before this my engine fails, correct? And you, you want to stop the aircraft, you have sufficient stop distance available, correct, including this stopway. But let us say you decide, okay, I will continue with the takeoff. What will happen? Your acceleration will slow down, correct? you will not be able to reach at the height of 35 feet. So, what is the prudent action as a pilot before this? Reset the takeoff. You get it? So, before V1, you have sufficient ASDA lifetime, lifetime class for you. Trust me, even when you join the airline or you go, you will come back to this class. Okay. You have sufficient ASDA, but you have insufficient TODA. You will not be able to reach height of 35 feet if you decide to continue with the takeoff. Clear? So, the prudent action is you stop, you reject the takeoff, abandon takeoff or reject takeoff or cancel takeoff, whatever you want to call it. After this, let us say you cross this speed and you say stop. I understand the problem. After this, you do not have sufficient insufficient stop distance. Madame I am telling you the simple logic, you do not have distance sufficient to stop. Okay. But after this, if you continue, you, have, you can reach height of 35 feet, you have achieved that speed. Okay. It means, you have sufficient TODA. means anything hap uh, happens after this, you rotate, you continue, you will reach height of 35 feet. So, what is the correct action? You will continue with the takeoff. Is that critical speed? Practically, when you fly, it is a drill as a pilot. Let us say whether you are on yoke or you are on the joystick, correct as a pilot, one hand is on the thrust lever. Okay, any malfunction before V1? Okay, that is a normal briefing we do in the cockpit. Okay, I am pilot flying for the takeoff in case of any emergency, any malfunction before V1, I will call stop. Okay, you put your thrust lever, if you have a reverse available, and then you take all the action to stop the aircraft before V1. That is what it is. And the moment the you hear that audio, all the call out by the other pilot, V1. The standard drill is you lift your hand from the thrust lever. In any aircraft, there is a standard drill. Why? The logic is very simple. By instinctive also, you should not bring thrust lever back. That is why in any aircraft you will fly V1, hand should be away. Now you are only focusing on safe takeoff. You get it? So that is why this audio is very important when you hear that call out V1 and your hand comes from here. Before V1, 
something happens, it's an instinctive reaction. Clear on this, on V1 part? Why it is decision speed? Before that, you have to stop. After that, you have no option but to continue. Clear on this importance of V1. Now, what is next? Any guess? Yes, one. B R. B R. Okay. V R. Yeah, both of you are right. V R is rotation speed. So, V1 is your decision speed. So, this is your decision speed. Next speed is V R. V R stands for rotation speed. V R is your rotation speed. Any guess what is rotation speed? Yes. तो फिर कुछ कुछ गलत बता देगा तो अभी ए टी पे ही फंसा हुआ है रोटेशन मीन्स वो यू रोटेट बेसिकली यू रोटेट यू डोंट यू पुल बैक ऑन द रोटेट विद इंटेंशन टू रोटेट द एयरक्राफ्ट टू टेक ऑफ ओके दैट इज द फर्स्ट एक्शन एज ए पायलट विच यू डू टू रेज द नोज व्हील अबाउ द रनवे सरफेस दैट इज रोटेशन द व्हील विल स्टार्ट रोटेटिंग एयरक्राफ्ट इज स्टिल नॉट टेकन ऑफ द मेन व्हील आर स्टिल ऑन द ग्राउंड एट दिस इज द स्पीड एट विच the pilot as a pilot you commence the action of pulling the control column back which gives elevator movement for the nose to rotate that is called v rotation this is the speed normally you will find v1 in most of the aircraft is equal to vr v1 rotate because now you don't want to eat up the runway or your uh, take off distance available correct so in most of the aircraft because now you have to continue v1 is passed your hand is off now what option you are left with you have to continue with the take off so you don't want to delay so most of the cases you will find v1 is equal to vr so v1 rotate normally but in condition which you will see it's get affected what get affected that also you will see okay so you have executed your intentions of continue to take off and you rotate it with the intention of lifting the nose wheel up from the runway surface okay now what is the next speed we will see how much should be the value of this okay they are very common sense kind of thing if you look at it which speed should be more normally people remain confused when you have questions also in airline entrance or atpl also cpl you have question normally people remain confused the right way is put this diagram in front of you as a pilot till you can actually read it out in your sleep also something like that it is that important okay then next speed is you have started the rotation what is the next speed okay let's come back to the which color okay hmm what is the next speed any guess okay it is v m u this speed is minimum unstick speed minimum uns unstick unstick means aircraft is capable of unsticking means lifting up the main wheel lifting up from the runway surface okay theoretically so any manufacturer any aeroplane he gives you take off technique a cut rope you rotate the control column so many degree per second rate or if you execute exactly that way a cut theoretic theoretically is capable of lifting up from the runway minimum unspeed but practically it doesn't happen because everybody's got different rotation technique flying technique somebody may pull faster somebody may do it slower but if everything is done copy back copy book theoretically the aircraft is lifting up from the runway surface at this speed minimum unstick speed like i said we will see the value little later what should be the values you have question in exam obviously your vr cannot be less than this v1 decision speed before decision speed you can't rotate okay unsticking from the runway surface at this speed 
but practically it doesn't happen so the practically when the all three wheels basically the main wheels get lifted up from the runway surface we lift off speed at this speed aircraft actually or the main wheels get lifted up from the runway surface your takeoff is not yet completed takeoff will complete at 35 feet screen height so at this aircraft is lifted off and the speed with the intention to reach the speed of v2 which is called take off safety speed the whole aim is that you reach v2 or more at screen height okay that's where you take off completes so quick summary of this all the speeds if you see when you started wheels roll okay by the way like i said there are certain speeds one is called vef engine failure i am not counting that then in between there is a speed called uh, maximum brake energy speed because to calculate v1 okay remember the formula runway length required is v square by 2a let's say you want to reject take off correct so you have to provide the deceleration how much deceleration is available to you so that depends what is the brake energy is available if the brakes are hot obviously your uh, deceleration will stop you will be requiring longer runway length to stop the aircraft in case you reject the take off so that's why when you will fly all those bigger aircraft you find a table in your manuals where it says that how much time you should give for the brake to uh, cool down if the temperature is more than that obviously your all these speeds will change we particularly in case you have to stop the aircraft i understanding if your brakes are hot let's say you want to take off your uh, brake efficiency is reduced so brake efficiency reduce ka work kahan padega at your v1 because then what will happen your v1 will reduce rotation will not change rotation is the intention to continue another important question which you find everywhere is which of the following speed will be affected by runway condition that is dry or wet okay use your basic logic if runway is wet or dry where it affects stop distance correct logic hai ye na agar runway wet hai what will happen the stop distance will increase if runway is dry in the smaller distance you can stop so rather than just remembering some definitions or some theories the logic is the best way in this if your runway is wet which speed will be affected basically you have to stop the aircraft stop means this v1 because now you require a longer runway so your v1 will reduce are you understanding but rotation won't be affected by wet runway because rotation is to for the continue with the take off it has got nothing to do with wet or dry runway so the speed which is affected by wet condition is your v1 will reduce so that's why practically also when you fly when you calculate performance in the aircraft whether airbus boeing or whichever whenever runway is dry you will always find v1 is equal to vr whenever runway is wet vr to utni rahegi if if other parameter i keep it same what will reduce your v1 will reduce so that's what happens you will find v1 maybe 99 or something or uh, your vr 101 something like or maybe 120 122 clear on this and then there is some ratio which will say how much should be vr minimum how much should be v2 we'll see that there is again this is the whole sequence of v speeds during take off so when at 35 feet you reach speed of v2 or more your take off is completed practically in all the aircraft you fly you cannot be so precise to maintain let's say my v2 is 140 knots you may not be very accurate to fly and this is the minimum safety speed if you are less than this you cannot maintain the direction that's why it is referred as so manufacturer always gives you error of margin so when you take off you will depending upon the aircraft you are flying so your target is to fly v2 plus 5 or v2 plus 10 that will cater for any inaccuracies let's say if i tell you your v2 is 130 knots 
you may not be that accurate. Like one, you have engine failure. One, you are controlling the direction and you are trying to take the away from the aircraft. You may not be able to maintain 130. If the speed comes less than 130, there's a problem. So what is the best thing? To maintain higher. So that's why in all the aircraft you will find your target is either V2 plus 5 or V2 plus 10. So VR should not be less than 1.05 times of V1. For example, let's say my V1 is 100 knots. Okay, so VR should not be less than 105 knots. Okay, this is a relationship by the way between VR and VMU also. We will not go into that, that goes too much into detail. Okay, the V1, whatever this V rotation, it should ensure that you should be able to reach VMU or 1.1 time of all engine operative. So there are a lot of permutation and combination between the relationship between VR and VMU. But for the basic stage to understand the performance, VR should not be less than V1 and it should not be uh, less than more than 1.05 times of V1. Okay. Now obviously takeoff safety speed P2 this will be more than all these speeds if you go by logic okay and this you should achieve by height of 35 feet clear on this so these are all your v speeds so this is as far as v speeds are concerned in the next class we will see takeoff path and takeoff segments so see you in the next class this is your captain surinder singh